everyone. Today we'll be talking to Professor Patricia Munori. He is an assistant professor in blueberry breeding and genomics in horticultural sciences department at the University of Florida. Thank you for joining us today. How did you get into the field of plant sciences? Um, I'm from a I'm from a farm, basically. So I grew up in a farm, you know, around plants and um, animals. I think that helped a lot. <laughs> uh, being all my life around, you know, plants and growing plants and seeing my dad actually, you know, growing these um, uh, all these different kinds of vegetables that that we that we used to eat uh, in the house and you know raising animals for our own consumption too. So um, after that, I think yeah, it was not very far from me to you know just go into plant science. So I did my undergrad in forestry engineer. Um, I was very curious about, you know, working with forests and I have all this idea of working with forest trees and uh, which is was very different than I, I thought <laughs> actually <laughs> because it was a more a lot more commercial than uh, I was imagining it would be. Um, and that's how my, my career in plant science started. Then I started working actually as an assistant um, breeder in a forestry company back in Chile and in that moment I realized that I want to be a plant breeder. Um, um, before that I knew already I wanted to do a PhD um, you know I just wasn't very sure on, on what area but I want to be a researcher and yeah so after being a breeder assistant in, in, in Chile in this company you know I yeah, I realized I wanted to, to pursue that area. And I did my master in quantity genetics and then my PhD in plant molecular cell biology. All the focus all the time was in plant breeding though. You've worked with a lot of crops, you've worked with forage, you've worked with blueberries. Which of them do you like to work with? <laughs> blueberries. <laughs> the one that you can eat. <laughs> yeah, we try to eat forest trees, they don't taste very good. <laughs> uh, yes, uh, I, I have learned a lot um, and I try to implement all what I have learned, you know, through my uh, studies and uh, from the different crops as well in the crop that I'm working right now. So that's been quite useful. Um, I usually tell the yoga that, you know, I used to work with forest trees and I will phenotype like this, then with foragers like this. So my neck was kind of getting tired, you know, now with blueberries, it's just right at my, my side. So uh, it's, it's much better. Um, I always wanted to work with a crop that actually uh, gets you better to the final consumer. And I think that was um, some, a goal of mine because with forest trees, you know, we were working for pulp and paper, for example, so you have the final consumer, you have, you know, the producers, and then you have the pulp and paper, um, you know, factories or industry. So there is a disconnection with the final consumer. Then in forages is the same, you know. We tried to ask the cows if the forage was good, but they didn't answer much, so. Um, and then with, with blueberries, you know, we can work directly with the final consumer. I mean, everywhere you go, actually, some people will tell you stories about their blueberries. Yeah. You know, how do they taste and how do they were as mushy, were good, they were great. You know, how much they like it and how they used to pick them in the forest. And uh, so that's very rewarding and it keeps you, you know, very motivated. That is so interesting. So could you walk us through a normal day in your work life, your research, lab, field work? Um, what is normal? <laughs> <laughs> uh, usually I arrive in the morning and then a lot of people is leaving the lab in different directions to, to take care of the different trials in the field and then updates, you know, with the uh, lab managers, the field managers, and I, I saw two of my teams in the morning going to to measure um, different traits and, and harvest uh, berries this morning also. Um, and then paperwork, tons of paperwork. <laughs> Did you uh, expect it was going to be like this? Not really, but then you start, as soon as you start working uh, as a faculty, you start realizing that yes, 
is it, it, it gets very intense so if you don't if you just don't live with it I mean basically you need to embrace it and try to work around it you know because um, if you fight it you're gonna be frustrated all the time so you make it part of your 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 work your work day you need to be systematic for example I mean that will help a lot you need to have kind of an order of how yeah. you do things yeah. otherwise uh, um, paperwork and administration can need you over. Okay. So currently, what's your research focused on? I will say that we are not different than any other plant breeding uh, or, or plant breeding program. The focus is usually in yield, quality, disease resistance. I mean, the order might vary a little bit, um, but usually that's the case for every plant breeding program. And we do everything that I was telling you before, so we work from very theoretical work and trying to find out what different genes or what is the biology or the molecular mechanism of, of, of some uh, traits that are important for us. And also at the same time, you know, try to find out more about the wild species and genomes and all that. And all the way to production system and how all different varieties perform in the field and <clears throat> and how we can make it better for our growers by testing different growing systems, for example. So um, now from the plant breeding point of view, I will say, you know, our major focus probably, I mean, apart from yield and, and disease resistance is, is quality. And we are working in, in that area of, of understanding better what are consumer preferences and, and then using that information in plant breeding. As a plant breeder and in all of the research that you're doing, what are the important skills you think that people need to have? I mean, a part of the technical skills that you need to learn um, as a plant breeder, of course, you know, plant breeding methodologies and, um, you know, we'll say in the technical part, you really need to um, learn more about quantity genetics and statistics are very important uh, nowadays um, in as a as a modern plant breeder it, you cannot go around without learning and understanding you know the use of molecular information in plant breeding either um, programming will be very useful as well managerial skills are very important if you want to go either in industry or in academia. Um, a little bit of understanding of how to manage budgets <laughs> will be good, actually. But that could be, you know, with the managerial skills as well. Um, yeah, we all get very well trained in the technical part, but nobody tells us that as soon as you finish, actually, you're going to be managing people and you're going to be managing budgets. And, and then uh, that part, the university, in the past has not been train us, uh, training us very well. I think that's changing. Uh, managing um, group of people and also at different levels of all the way from, you know, people that's just doing labor in the field all the way to, you know, to our colleagues um, as postdocs um, is, is, is challenging. It's challenging and then it requires to pay attention. It requires to have good communications it requires to to talk to them all the time and set very well the expectations. So in our lab, we have uh, keywords that we use all the time. So the first one is respect. The second one is communication. The third one is expectations. And the fourth one is patience. So uh, we try to grab everything that we do around these keywords. And then we always talk about them and how the different things and different actions that we take, you know, impact you know, your performance will also impact, you know, the your well being and the well being of the whole group. So that is so inspiring. <laughs> so outside of work, what do you like to do? Play soccer. <laughs> <laughs> and, <laughs> and be with my kids. Oh. So um, yeah, that's those are the things to do. Outdoor, outdoor activities. Sitting outside, you know, going for a walk outside, you know, enjoy enjoying outdoors. That's great. So finally, what advice do you have for graduate students and upcoming scientists? 
I mean, I have to be consistent with the advice to give to my students, right? So, <laughs> uh, <clears throat> I will tell them that, you know, at the beginning, when, when we hired them, that doing a PhD, for example, is a challenging task. It's not something that uh, demands a lot out of you. Uh, but you need to be ready. Uh, but if you have this passion that we were talking about, you know, and if you are sure of what you want to do, I'm pretty sure you're going to be successful. Um, prepare from day one that, you know, to be independent, to be proactive, um, basically to enjoy what you do, and you are going to be fine, you know. So in, in, in that regard, you know, trust yourself and then never be afraid to ask questions and then really work hard trying to find the, the you know, a good place to, to work because um, that's going to be key for your success. So you need to be surrounded by a good, um, by good people, basically. At the end of the day, everything goes back to that. So. Well, thank you so much for talking to us today. It was really a great time. Thank you.